hey guys in this video we'll be installing visual studio 2019 community edition now to get to the visual studio website we type in visualstudio.microsoft.com and then we'll be routed to this landing page where they're giving us a nice little preview of what visual studio looks like uh, they give us nice you know anecdotal introductions to what is possible with Visual Studio and you can scroll through and they show you, you can develop, analyze, debug, test, collaborate and deploy. So they make it look very simple and not to say it isn't, but we just need to understand what we're working with. So earlier I did say that Visual Studio is modular and it has a lot of plugins for uh, different environments. So here is a quick run through of some of the packages that visual studio makes available to us for development purposes so we have asp.net and web development azure python we have dotnet desktop development we have mobile development we have quite a few things that visual studio can do we don't necessarily need all so for this course in particular we're going to be focusing on dotnet and web development so that's the one that we're going to focus on so with all of that said let's go up and see how we can get about installing visual studio so we want to go to the download visual studio and we want to get the community edition so we do have professional and we do have enterprise but then the community edition is free for individuals and academic users and it's also open source so once again um if you are in an enterprise setting you should get enterprise and you have to pay a license for that but then for our pet project or an individual project or academic project open source purposes community is there it's free and it's fully powered and waiting to be used so we just get community and then that triggers a download for an installer so we just click on that installer that was just downloaded run it will initialize and then we can go ahead with our installation so we click continue and that just fetches a few files for us all right so after it's finished with those initial workloads then what it will do is ask us what packages do we wish to install to support whatever it is that we're going to be developing so like i said we're developing a web application so we need the asp.net and web development package or workload and then we tick that um we tick that box here and then to the right hand side you'll see that they're giving us a little list of what will be included so the latest dotnet uh, framework is 4.8 so you notice that we're getting 4.4 4 to 4.6 so i'm just going to go ahead and take uh, all of these all of these dotnet framework 4.6.1 point two point seven point eight and that's not all though we need dotnet core but then this course is based on dotnet core 3.1 which is the latest but if you go with visual studio then you're getting 2.1 so we can leave that alone after this then i'll show you how to get 3.1 also since we'll be doing a little azure stuff we i'm just going to tick the azure box and we don't have to modify much more there i'm just ticking that box to make sure that we have any libraries that we require you can do a drill down and just see what else is available to you so if you click the dotnet core cross-platform development if you click that workload then you get some more dotnet core things but i think a lot of those are already included in the web development workload as you would notice that the total space will increase with each workload that you choose so i'm just going to untick the azure one and i'm just going to make sure i have the dotnet core cross-platform workload and the asp.net and web development workloads we're not doing much development with azure so you can tick it if you want if you if you know you have the space that's fine and of course the more you tick is longer it will take to download but i'm not going to tick it for this particular course so once again we just have the asp.net and web development and we have the dotnet core cross-platform development and then i'm just going to click install and then it, that will start the installation which is really a download so based on your internet speed this is going to vary in length so i'm just going to 
resume when everything is finished here. Alright, so this process is finished. It probably took just under an hour. And they are saying that they require that I restart my computer in order to complete this setup. So I'm going to say not no. Not that you don't need to restart, but there's something else that I want to show you before I let you reboot. So I'm going to say not no, which is basically just not going to complete the installation just yet. But I'm just going to minimize this and I'm going to show you that we need to download the .NET Core 3.1 tools. And so I already have that open and you can get to this website through .net.microsoft.com and then I'm at slash download where it is showing me that I can download the .NET Core 3.1 tools or the runtime for that specifically as well as .NET Framework 4.8. So we actually just installed Visual Studio with the .NET Framework 4.8 tool, so we don't need to pay attention to that, but we do need the Core 3.1. And I did say earlier that the .NET Core is built for multiple platforms. It's cross-platform. So you see that they have the Windows download, they have the Linux download, they have the Mac OS download, and they have a Docker download. All right, so we'll go with the windows i'm using a windows machine and i'm teaching you based on windows but that being said whichever one you're on you download the one that's appropriate for you and we run the app so i'm going to just download the dotnet core runtime and i'm also going to download the dotnet core sdk so i'm just going to download the x64 because i have a 64 bit and we can download that and install it so when the installer comes up, it's pretty straightforward. Just click install and then it will do what it needs to do. And then it will say that it was successful. So it really didn't take that long to install. And I'm just going to go back and also get the SDK. So what I got was the runtime. Now I'm going to download the SDK. Now SDK is short for software development kit. So that's where the real development tools will be um made available for visual studio to interact with i notice they're saying that this release is only compatible with visual studio 2019 so if you have 2017 or an earlier version then you may want to upgrade so that's downloaded let's just install that so when the installer comes up we just click install let it do its thing and then it says that everything was successfully installed and they gave us all the run times and all of the and they're pointing us to different documents that we can use for you know resources so we can close that and now that we've done all of this then i can restart the computer so i didn't want to restart and then forget the steps so i just made sure to install everything and then we just do one big restart and allow the computer to do its thing all right so now that our restart is complete let us go ahead and fire up visual studio 2019 and you can find it by going to the start menu and you can probably just type in visual studio it will pop up i already pinned my visual studio 2019 to my start menu as well as to my taskbar so just by clicking this purple icon that looks like that infinity sign we will launch our visual studio now once it's launched it encourages you to sign in or create an account and you can opt to do that later now with the community edition it will actually give you a little like a 30 day trial kind of feeling if you don't sign in so if you choose not now maybe later and then later down the line you you see like they're saying oh it has expired or something like that it's really just saying that they expect that you sign in once you sign in then there is no expiration experience that you'll have all right so i'm just going to sign in my windows account and this is the windows account or the microsoft account that i had long before and this is the one that i'll be using for any azure related activities that i have so i'm just going to Go ahead and log in once again you can create a microsoft account or if you already have one just use it and log in now whether you opted to sign in or you said not no maybe later you'll be led to this page where they ask you what style you like so dark dark theme is all the rage in it 
right now but you can choose the theme that is appropriate for you and the development settings i'm going to put that to web development so general yeah that's fine but then web development they kind of put certain things at certain places to make it more obvious for you to see all right so once you do all of that you can start visual studio now just now my attempt to sign in failed because i'm on a server and there are certain restrictions around certain activities and so I'm just highlighting that to show that if you said not know maybe later, then this is the screen you'll get once Visual Studio launches. You'll be prompted to sign in and to the right, you'll see that you have a 30 day trial. So once again, your evaluation period has ended. Please sign in to unlock the product. So all you really need to do is sign in and that evaluation message goes away. So I'm going to sign in once again. All right, I know that I've signed in. You see that I have that personalized account. They highlight my account and then that evaluation message really has gone away. And so I can click close. And then this is the launch screen for Visual Studio 2019. So from here, I can check out something from a source control. I can open an existing project, open a local folder or create a new project. So we're going to pause right here. If you got this far, then that's perfect. You've installed Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition, and then you're ready for the next activity.